All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. It is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker to the stage, who is Marina, Marina Bairi Shiva. She is the COO at LKI Consulting, which is a Web3 marketing and design agency. We'll change the pace a little bit from all the technical talk now, and, ta and we'll hear from Marina about marketing going sci-fi, how AI and advanced analytics are taking your strategy development and execution to the next level. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Marina Bairi Shiva. Hi guys, it's not very often that I get to explain to developers what I do, not the other way around, so I think win in the marketing book uh, for all the marketeers out there. Uh, today we're going to be covering a few topics. Number one is why do 99% of people start using AI wrong? What do 1% do right? And the three tactics that you can actually implement in order to boost your marketing strategy and operations. With the raise of hands here, how many of you imagined that when ChatGPT became a thing uh, a few months ago, you're going to finally get that amazing AI assistant that's going to help you get rid of all the boring tasks that you're dealing with, that's going to be the junior savior that everyone wanted, but their company didn't want to pay you to get? Gav, you're the only one? OK. And how many of you actually expected to get an AI partner who would help you expand on your ideas, who would be able to test, who would be able to bounce back all the good things and kind of help you arrive to the data-driven choices that you need? More than I expected. Tough crowd to be in because our research shows that 95% of people are using AI wrong as their own assistants. And truth to be told, I used to be among one of those people. When ChatGPT made the debut, I thought, oh my god, I'm going to finally help all the clients that apply to work with us. I'm going to scale the operations. I'm going to be um, brainstorming so many ideas, developing all the creative marketing concepts. I was wrong, to say the least. What happened is that we ended up getting creative concepts that were so cringe that we created a dedicated Slack in our agency to just screenshot and exchange them. And after that, we also figured out that all the blog posts, all the content that AI is producing is just broken. It doesn't make sense. So we ditched AI for about a month until we came across another interesting statistics. Up to 280 hours, human hours, are spent uselessly on analyzing data. And here I'm not talking about advanced data analysis where a human being needs to be involved. I'm talking about a waste of time on trying to identify the patterns that any trained uh, machine model can do. So the bottom line, if you treat your AI as an assistant, you're doing it wrong. Here are the track record that proves it. LK Consulting, an award-winning marketing and design agency, conducted the research. We worked with giants like Binance and NordVPN and also with up-and-coming infrastructure projects, Layer 1, Layer 2, Neobanks, and so on. And after we integrated the AI mentality that I'm going to talk to you today, we managed over 100 million in marketing budget. And now also to answer all the frequently whispered questions in the audience, what is a marketing person doing on a tech conference? I personally come from a tech background. I've been in tech marketing for over five years. I uh, scaled campaigns from a million to 60 million in budget and helped over 200 companies with their marketing. And now it is my pleasure to walk you through uh, the AI uh, model that we're using in the agency. There are three mistakes that people usually do when they start getting acquainted with AI. Mistake number one, they expect that they're going to automate all the small tasks. In reality, if you want to teach your AI to automate all the small tasks, you're going to miss out on the bigger picture. And the reality is like this. The only person who can see a bigger picture is the specialist that is teaching the AI. Number two is when you try to generate ideas in bulk. 
So what you end up getting is 50 half-assed ideas instead of 10 strong ones. And number three is when you try to teach AI to write emails. We often forget that uh, the message is by far not the most important part of the email. The main thing is actually the recipient. So what AI does not get is who is the human who is receiving that email? What's their personality? How are they going to react? I sent a few emails, um, external and internal, and it was a major failure, so please don't. Now let's talk how 1% of people actually use AI right. Uh, insight number one is to brainstorm ideas based on the core direction. Instead of going to OpenAI and saying, give me 10 ideas to promote my mobile app, you're going to brainstorm the general direction that you want to move into, and you're going to input it in a prompt in bullet points format. And then you're going to ask AI to develop ideas based on the strategy that you already put together. It is your marketing team who knows better than anyone else what is the timeline that you're looking at, what are some channels, what is the overall budget. But you do not need to spend hours and hours in order to develop the concept that you already have. So AI is great at taking your basic idea and preparing a long, detailed marketing plan that you need. After you get the basic 10 ideas from AI, what you're going to do is identify the one to three ideas that you like the most. And then you're going to go back to them. Imagine they're junior. You need to give them feedback. And you're going to be like, hey, rewrite this based on um, ideas that I like the most. And you can do it multiple times, one, three, five, depending on how advanced your AI is getting. Number two is going back to optimizing the small tasks. When you're doing so, you're missing out on the bigger picture and the most important thing, which is context. I'll give you an example of a company that heard from someone that the most important part about growing their social media is to post consistently. So what they did, they got an AI-guided tool for posting on Twitter. Day after day, they were releasing their posts at 10 AM. But the truth is, nothing happened with their engagement. They were not growing followers. They were not getting more likes or more retweets because the reality is you need to know what is happening with your social media on a daily basis. There needs to be a trained social media manager who's identifying the patterns, who is looking what are the daily trending topics, um, do we need to adjust the strategy anywhere, how are we performing. So if you decide to automate small tasks, you need to make a note for yourself every day that you need to double check how your software is running. In the same way as you're making sure that um, your website is still live and the hosting didn't fail, you need to make sure that your AI is still doing what you want it to do. On the other hand, you can use AI to scale marketing operations. Instead of feeding it only one data stream, why don't we try giving it all the more data to analyze? An example of this would be a company that is running uh, cross-channel digital ads. You need to be on LinkedIn, on Google, on Meta, on Twitter, wherever you want to be. So if I'm going to give AI results only from Meta, I'm going to get a very limited interpretation. But if I'm going to export all the key conversion results from multiple channels and ask to build hypothesis on what I'm going to do uh, to improve conversions across the different channels, I can get an input on the holistic tr strategy. Sure. That will take you much more time to build. You will need to develop prompts. You will need to spend some time optimizing it. But the overall long-term impact that it's going to have on your business is incomparable from you going and getting rid of a few small tasks versus scaling your overall marketing performance. And number three, analyzing the right kind of data. Probably that is my favorite point, because as human beings who live in an overall noisy media space where the data is available to pretty much anyone who Googles, we try to huddle data. We try to get as much as possible. But the truth is, more does not mean better. Sometimes knowing exactly what you need to analyze is the only key to success. So the first thing you can do with the AI is give multiple data points and the end goal that you want to reach and ask, what is the one metric I need to pay attention in order to get to that goal? I'll give you also an example of a gaming client who really wanted to get traction in order to raise uh, some funds to promote the game. 
Originally, they focused on user acquisition. Getting downloads was the easiest thing you can do. Uh, we got 30,000 downloads, and then we hit a wall. Uh, the conversions were still high, but we were not getting as many downloads as we used to. So of course, we uploaded into our AI-guided tool, and we asked a question, why is it not working? And the hypothesis that came out of it was fascinating. You need to focus not on getting your conversions optimized, but actually on raising your customer retention. Because if I like the game, I'm going to go to every person in this audience, and I'm going to recommend the game. So actually realizing that um, the metrics that used to perform traditionally might not perform anymore, and the AI is actually the guy that can help you figure out that is one of the good um, ways to uh, optimize the right kind of data. Now, also, let's talk about the three tactics that you can implement in your next marketing operations. You do not need to get a huge marketing team to do it. If you're a solopreneur, if you're a developer who wants to get their own app up, you can do it by buying a $24 subscription plus VAT. Number one, teach AI to talk like you. The thing is, we expect AI to be perfect, to understand how we want to sound, and to do it from the first try. But the reality is very different. The number one thing you need to take away is that you need to teach any model to emulate the type of voice that you have. And the key word is that you need to know what your voice is. If I'm going to ask yourself, as a thought leader, what do you want to sound as? Are you confident? Are you inspirational? Are you cheeky? Are you formal? Most people don't have an answer. But they go to ChatGPT and they ask to write them a social media post. And then they go, mm, that does not sound like me. I'm like, well, how could it? Did you teach it to sound like you? So there are four steps that you can take to actually train your AI model to talk like you. Number one, you're going to tell them who, they, who you are. Hey, I'm a marketing specialist. You're going to say how many years of experience you have, because that is going to reflect your tone of voice. I'm a marketing specialist with five years of experience. Then you're going to tell them who you're going to be talking to. Again, message doesn't matter. The recipient matters much more. I'm going to be creating content for um, an audience with a technical background today. And they're going to be uh, between the ages of 25 to 45. So let's keep it more Gen Z millennial style. Then you're going to take one social media post. You're going to sit, and you're going to suffer it out, and you're going to write one social media post. And you're going to put that social media post and say, mimic the way I write. Because the way you're teaching AI is the same as you're training on board and a new specialist to your team. You need to give them clear instruction and clear example. So when you're checking their work, they actually have a guideline to follow. And last but not least, you're going to generate the prompt. You're going to correct the exact things that you want to correct. And you're going to reuse it every time you need AI to uh, talk like you. You need to understand that AI is not going to sound perfect. In many ways, it's still going to sound cropped, choppy, sharp. But fixing something that is not perfect is always easier than starting from scratch. Number two. We trained AI how to talk like you. Now we're going to train AI how to think like you. The best things happen uh, when you work with clients. And clients always have expectations for the deliverables that you need to have. And coming from an agency with like eight years uh, in background of working with different clients, we saw it more than once. So now we ask very specific questions. What do you want in your strategy? What is the measure of success? What is the blueprint that you expect? And that is exactly what you're going to do with your AI. First, you're going to give a clear end goal and the outcome that you're looking for. You're going to introduce the project that you're creating an agenda for. And then you're going to list an outline that you want to get the response for. The first outline is going to be short. It's going to be sharp. It's going to lack um, the context. And you're going to take one point per outline. And then you're going to develop it. When we're trying to teach AI to think like us, we also need to understand that it's learning from failure. And it's also learning every time we're telling them, do like this again. So do not mind going in a live discussion with your model and telling them five times, no, go back. This is wrong. Do it like this. 
Let's look here at a comparison between two companies. We have two tasks that we gave. Number one, uh, the goal was to improve the social media strategy, and we gave super basic uh, things like analyze the top 10 posts, give idea on um, improving the performance of those posts, and also create a plan for execution. Question is what plan, for how many days, what is an execution plan? AI has no clue. So a way that you can improve it is give a clear, tangible goal. Get 10,000 more Twitter followers. So AI can understand that their main idea is to reach as many people as possible. Number two, you're going to tell them to give you specific reasons for high-performing content. And one more thing that you can do is actually ask AI to ask you questions. In order to reach this goal, what is the one thing that you need to know from me? And I'll tell you. You're going to also ask them to brainstorm content pillars for growth. Instead of getting some random ideas that most likely don't align with your brand guidelines yet, you're going to ask them to give you big topics. If you like the big topics, you can go into the smaller details. And last thing, you're going to ask them for a posting schedule for a clear number of days so they know exactly what you're doing and how they can format it. And uh, last but not least, we're going to teach AI how to challenge you. There are three reasons why you want to do that. Number one, you're biased. Either it's confirmation bias, halo effect, or whatever else you have, AI doesn't have it. As human beings, we have beautiful, sensitive natures, and we have one idea, we're going to stick to it. So if you think you have a win in marketing idea, or pretty much any idea in development in tech world, you're going to take that idea, describe it briefly, and put it into um, the prompt and ask AI to give you 10 reasons why this idea is going to fail. And you'll have to swallow your ego and read them all. Then you're going to pick the two, three ideas that you believe in the most that can actually impact um, the rundown of your campaign. And you're going to ask to expand on them. You're going to ask to be harsh. You're going to ask not to hold back. Even um, after this whole uh, process, if you still believe that your idea is working, congratulations, you passed the bias. Number two, you want to ask AI to challenge you because it does not believe in vanity metrics. Again, as human beings, we like to look good. We like to be respected. We like to appear as we are intelligent and smart. AI doesn't care. So you're going to give all the data that you have, and you're going to ask a blunt question. What can I do so this analytics is going to be better in a month? What do I need to improve in my marketing campaign with X goal? And the number three um, part is AI is learning from its mistakes. Most human beings do, not all of them. With AI, you're going to describe a failure that you had with the previous marketing campaign. And you're going to upload the brief for your new marketing campaign and tell to analyze the risk of the same mistake happening again. And then it is up to you to take that into consideration and understand if there is a, um, a risk of uh, the same misfortune happening. Let's summarize. We have three tactics that you need to save. We're going to teach AI how to think. We're going to teach AI how to talk. And we're going to teach AI how to challenge you. If you're going to nail down these three, congratulations. You're using AI better than 95% of people who I met. Now, for the checklist, for all of you who want to be the founders and entrepreneurs, for all of you who are thinking to launch their own projects, you need to check yourself for three things. Number one, do I have AI with the goal of scaling marketing operations, or do I just want to have AI not to hire another person? Do a cold reality check with yourself. Number two, figure out if you want a partner who can brainstorm you through the challenges or if you just want to get some random ideas and work through them on your own. And number three, you're going to check if you did everything for AI to execute in your voice. AI needs to read at some point. AI needs to learn at some point to read um, your thoughts and to understand how you think so they can reflect who you are and they can actually become a helpful tool and not a software that you downloaded once and forgot. 
If you have any questions, I'll take Jira tickets, I'll take uh, GitHub pull requests, you know, whatever works. Uh, in the meantime, until I get that platform sorted out, please feel free to uh, connect with me on Telegram and catch me in the hallway. It was an absolute uh, pleasure to talk with you today, and I thank you for your attention. Marina, thank you very much for sharing. Now we'll move into Q&A. Uh, so go ahead and scan the QR code for any questions that you may have for Marina. We'll give everybody a moment. All right, Marina, first question. You ready? <laughs> All right, so working within the Web3 industry, how can you actually use AI for emerging industries? Yeah, that's a great one. So in Web3, what you need to understand, number one, traditional marketing is not going to work. It's just going to fail straight away. Because the challenges and the audience that you have uh, within the crypto industry is thinking quite different to the audience that we have in uh, the regular tech world. So there are a few things you can do with your AI to make it better. Number one, you can upload uh, a few traditional marketing campaigns that you did. You can explain the audience and ask to optimize these campaigns to adjust them to perform in the Web3 world, uh, depending on some of the factors that impact that. Number two, you can also use AI-guided tools to do on-chain marketing. In the traditional world, um, tr advertising is always uh, directive. I show to you, if you like it, you click on it. In the Web3 world, advertising works a little bit different. Um, many people can engage with different uh, points of interest, and it is based on the blockchain data that we actually figure out how, um, how to market to them and what interests they have. In terms of producing content, brainstorming ideas, the blueprint that I shared with you today is completely um, fine to take into the Web3 world. The only thing that you'll need to ask yourself in the back of your hand is who is the actual recipient that I'm doing this for. If um, the technical user still fits the agenda, feel free to use all the tips that you got today. So much. All right, we have a lot of questions coming in very quickly. Uh, the one with the most upvotes right now. Is artificial, is artificial intelligence dangerous for the future of humanity? Not only ChatGBT, but others who can create a copy of you and use it for bad intentions. I think anything can be used for bad intentions, right? Um, again, we are in the world where uh, the technology is only as good as the person who is supervising it. In terms of substituting jobs, I don't think that anyone with the creative skills, strategic thinking skills, the problem solving skills is in danger. AI cannot think outside of the model that we train them to do, and instead of um, in terms of any uh, plagiarism issues, uh, fake news, and so on. Fake news have been out there for a long time. Use your critical thinking. There is no savior from not using um, uh, your critical thinking enough. All right, next one with the most upvotes. You mentioned that AI wasn't biased. Could you elaborate? AI, AI learns from data created by humans. How can it not be biased? AI learns from the information that we give them, that's right, but if you did not speak about any topic uh, that you're analyzing at some point, it's not going to have um, a bias for it at that moment. If you're comparing the bias that AI has just from learning the information that we input it uh, into it uh, to the bias that you have as a human being that's been trying to launch that marketing campaign for 90 days, the bias that AI has is much lower. So everything is in comparison. I'm not saying the level is at the zero, but it's going to be considerably lower than human bias that is also strengthened by all the emotions and the psychological uh, feelings that are attached to it. There are so many more questions, Marina. I hope that's OK. Uh, next one is, what if your social media campaign is being changed by stakeholders three to four times a week? How do you train the AI to be prepared for these ideas that are completely opposite to the data and strategy? That's a great question to ask a marketing agency that constantly has clients that change their minds. Um, the reality, there is no uh, magic pill that you can take. You need to um, go back and explain uh, the changed goal and also something that the client doesn't like. AI reacts quite nicely to um, negative feedback 
often better than to positive feedback. So you can give clear things that did not work out for the client and ask to reflect uh, based on that. One more thing that you can do is actually assign a label to your AI. You're acting as a consultant, and your goal is to achieve um, the outcome that we have in terms of marketing objectives while making the client happy. How are you going to do that? And then AI knows that they need to incorporate the feedback that is being given to them by the third party as well. It's hard to choose what next question to pick because there are a lot of uploads, but I'll just go by what's most popular. Uh, how to upload to GBT-like services your personal data to learn, like your conversations with 1,000 with 1, clients? I'm not sure I understood the question. Uh, Maybe myself as well. How to upload to ChatGPT like services your personal data to learn, like your conversation. Oh, I also don't understand. Did you grasp it? We can move on to the next one. I don't think you need to have a sample of 1,000 clients. That's one thing. You need to pick the two or three examples that you need AI to learn from again. As a human, you need to be selective about the data that you're feeding them. And if you're going to take the sample of 1,000 clients, communication is not going to give you the sample that you're looking for. I think that that's the better question. That's the better answer to the question. All right, perfect. Uh, two questions in one. Uh, do you think that AI will replace AI programmers? And do you think that AI can replace your job? Well, I hope not. I'm still pretty young. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't think that AI will develop the critical thinking, the problem solving, the strategic grasp, the helicopter view, any joke, uh, as a human being does. In terms of AI programmers, there is still needs to be um, a human professional who is supervising the AI learning. So I don't think that any of these jobs are um, in danger. What is in danger is people who refuse to adapt to the new reality and who don't learn the new skills. So I think we should be uh, looking inwards and asking ourselves, do we educate um, ourselves on the new trends? Are we ready to rise up to the new challenges that are going to happen when uh, some of the parts of our job get eliminated because of technology? If some of the parts get eliminated, there will always be more uh, tasks that you can do. You know, as companies will always find the job for you to do, I think. Thank you so much for answering all of these questions. There are more, but I will wrap up the Q&A. And please find uh, Marina during the lunch break uh, if you want to follow up on this specific question that you asked. Thank you so much, Marina Bardisheva, for sharing with us. Thank you so much, guys.